Whether you are playing Stardew Valley for the first time or just wanting to improve and perfect your early game choices, this video has 20 helpful tips and that will make your pursuit for a thriving farm a breeze. Do me a favor and make sure you always do number seven and number 16. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe. Number one, collecting fiber. There are about a thousand uses for fiber, and while it may seem like the item that you might want to discard when your backpack is full, I am telling you to stop and get rid of the sap instead. Fiber is used in large quantities for recipes such as scarecrows, tree fertilizer, grass starters, tea saplings, totems, and deluxe retaining soil. You can blow through a lot of fiber very quickly so make sure you collect a lot. Number two, this is a very basic tip, but choose the basic farm layout. Simply put, this is the easiest layout to plan around, and there are so many farmable squares that once your farm starts scaling, more sprinklers, more money to plant more crops, it will be the easiest for you to get rolling in the Stardew Valley currency. And once you've played through it once or twice, then you might want to choose a more unique type of farm because those are also very fun to play. This is going to be a little bit of a hot take for number three because a lot of you are those corporate haters, but Joja Mart is open on Wednesdays, unlike a certain local entrepreneur. Obviously, we're going to do the majority of our shopping at Pierre's because it is the most cost efficient. But all I'm saying is if you need to plant the cauliflower that day on a Wednesday, run, don't walk to Joja Mart. Even if it is a little bit more expensive, sometimes it is just convenient and necessary to buy from that store. Number four, I'm backtracking on this from a previous video a little bit, but it is so tempting to get the backpack right away because carrying more items is so useful and convenient. However, save your money until after the egg festival on the 13th because you can make a lot of profit from the strawberry seeds. So put all your resources into that and soon you'll be available to afford a lot more than just the backpack. Number five, take advantage of the advanced crafting menu. This is in your settings and it was added in the last, well, or previous update, depending on when you watch this video, the 1.5 update, not 1.6. And it is very useful because you can tell what items you have already crafted, what items you can craft based on your current inventory, and when you get way later into the game and are going for perfection, you will need to reference this very often. Number six, your character moves 10% faster on tiles that you place on your farm or around the map. So if you want to follow the same pass every day while doing your chores on the farm, it is worth it to use some extra wood or stone to craft some paths to give you some extra time back in your day to go exploring when you're done watering your crops or feeding your animals. Number seven, the bubble spots. I cannot stress enough how time efficient these are. Fish bite four times faster than normal in these bubbling spots. So this is one of the reasons I always try to carry my fishing rod around, especially early because you never know when they're gonna pop up. Not only can you use it, which is an easy way to get early money in Stardew and level up your fishing skill, which makes fishing even easier as you level, but you can eat some of the fish you catch if you're running low on energy, which can let you fish until the spot runs out, and if you find multiple spots until the very end of the night. The bubble spots also decrease your chances of catching trash. The Luau is a nice festival because it allows you to make some strides with the townsfolk. Depending on what you donate to the soup, you get a varying amount of friendship points with every single person in Pelican Town. An easy way to get the best result in year one is by donating a gold quality cauliflower or melon. But unless you use a speed grow fertilizer, then the melon likely won't be ready yet, so you're better off to go with the cauliflower. Or a gold quality large milk if you got a barn very early in spring. If those aren't possible, you can get the second best rating by choosing normal quality cauliflower, a large milk, kale, melon, maple syrup, pike, flounder, or catfish. There is also a ton more choices you can uh, use and you can reference them on the Stardew Valley Wiki, but these are all ones you should be able to obtain by the first summer luau. Speaking of summer, hops are a very underrated moneymaker and this is why. 
they sell for so little in their raw form, but if you can turn them into pale ale, in the kegs, they sell for a huge profit margin. It may take you a while to do all the processing, but it is very worth it. Just be aware that you need the resources to craft a bunch of kegs, so try to get a couple tappers early as possible to put on oak trees so that you can obtain the oak resin, and make sure to chop down a bunch of trees and save the wood, or if you have some extra cash, buy from Robin. Just note you have to be careful where you plant the hop starters because you can't walk through them once they're done. And also they start producing a lot of hops once they're ready. So you're going to have a lot of volume to process. So make sure you have enough kegs to keep up with it. Number 10, with any processing machine, kegs, preserve jars, furnaces, it's good practice to make sure you never go to bed without the machines working because you actually get extra value from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m., which will make your goods be ready almost three hours sooner. So if you have things to process, make sure the last thing you do before you go to bed is throw them in the processing machines. Number 11, not sure what you need for the community center? and don't want to run over there to check or scroll through your community center icon? Well, if you hover over your items and if the community center icon flashes, then it means that you still need it for a bundle. Just be aware that in some cases like apples or gold star vegetables, you may need more than one of each item. All right, so this one is almost self-explanatory, but for number 12, make sure to do the initial mine run in multiples of five if at all possible. So each time you hit a floor ending in five or zero, you will gain access to it with the elevator. And so if you keep ending your mine runs on floors that end with four or nine each time, it will just delay you getting to the bottom of the mines by days or even weeks, depending on how often you can visit it. Number 13, there will come a point in time in your farming and mine adventures when you can no longer get by with the typical energy sources such as field snacks or blackberries or other forageable goods, and you will have to start putting some money into energy sources. Here is my recommendation. Salad. It's the most efficient choice from the permanent stock at the Star Drop Saloon, followed by baguette, followed by pizza. The only caveat to this is if you are being swarmed by enemies, especially things that fly at you right when you enter the mines, gaining more health in one item can make sure you outheal the damage because you don't want to hit zero health in any circumstances. So it is good to have some items that heal you a lot in one go, but overall the most efficient is the salad. The rotating stock is usually even less gold efficient than the regular items. However, it might offer other buffs such as defense or luck, which does come in handy in the mines. So make sure to scroll down to the bottom of the saloon menu every time you go to check out what else Gus might be offering. Number 14, the secret woods. Once you get your axe upgraded to silver quality from Clint, you can chop down the log in cinder sap forest on the northwest side to access an area that will give you consistent access to hardwood that responds every single day plus some other useful forageables. All right so if you are going to buy one fruit tree in year one for my 15th tip I recommend making it the apple tree. It is one of the least expensive trees and you should have enough money saved to purchase it in early summer. It does take a full season to grow, so if you plant it around the first to third of summer, it can be ready to produce apples for you for the entire fall. And apples are used in several of the bundles. Apples also make a great gift for most of the town's folks, and it can be turned into wine for even more profit. If you have quite a bit of money by mid to end of summer, I also recommend buying a pomegranate tree as well. This will allow you to select the mushroom option from Demetrius, which is good for mine sustenance and quick cash, and then you don't have to choose the bat option. Number 16, don't waste your expensive and precious tokens at the fair on the orange option for the spinner wheel. The green option actually has a 75% chance, even though it looks 50-50, so it is best to put your money on that each time. One technique I personally use is to put 60-80% to 80 of my tokens 
on green. And then after hitting it two or three times in a row, I will use a lesser amount until I hit orange. Once you hit orange, you're probably safe to increase your bets again. And it's crucial to keep doing this till you hit 2000 tokens in your first fall so you can get a star drop. Number 17, the ghosts in the mines are very annoying because they can take forever to slay, especially with a weaker weapon because you don't do much damage and yet they get knocked back very far. However, they do provide a lot of good drops early, such as gold ore, refined quartz, or solar essence. So if you have the time, make sure to kill every ghost you see. Additionally, if you've already reached the bottom of the first mines, they also have a very small chance to drop diamond or prismatic shards. Floors 81 to 119 in the mines have a chance to spawn a bunch of forageable mushrooms that is very easy money and in the case of purple mushrooms, they can help you stock up on some energy and health sources for the mines. So each floor from 81 to 119 has about a 4% chance to be a mushroom floor each day, but it is only the first time you visit it. For example, if you go down to floor 96 and it's a mushroom floor, collect all the mushrooms and leave the mine, then go back into level 96, it will no longer have the mushrooms in it. But multiple floors can be mushroom floors every day, so you just have to search and see, but it is a very low chance that you will get multiple in one day. Before we get to the last two tips, I just wanted to say once again, if you learned anything new from this video, you are all but required to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any other Stardew content, including other tips and guides videos, but also some other just entertainment based videos as well. Planning on getting married in your first year? Okay, so number 19, other than the very obvious requirement of getting 10 hearts with who you intend to marry, there is also a very specific circumstance you need to make this wedding happen. This is for it to be raining, while having 10 hearts with your partner and having access to the east part of the beach where an old mariner will sell you a shell necklace for $5,000. He only appears when it is raining, so you should aim to have 10 hearts by early fall so that you can buy the necklace on a rainy day. Otherwise, if you have level 9 foraging, that is another way that you can get it because you can craft a rain totem and get it to be a rainy day in the winter. He does not appear on snowy days in winter. It has to be raining, so the only way is to use a rain totem. Last but not least, number 20, the traveling car. It can help speed up your community run a lot because it offers a lot of random and rare items but one of the most important things to watch out for is the rare seed because you can grow it in fall and it takes almost the whole season to grow but you can give it to the statue in the secret woods and get a star drop which is extremely helpful. If you still feel like you need some more tips, I am going to link in the comments and at the end of this video some other tips guides that I've made so you can see what else you might be wanting to focus on in the first year or in some cases in later years and that will help keep you going until I make my next tip videos. Have a great day.